Saturday. So come out, ladies. We have a great Bible study on Wednesday nights. Oh, my goodness. We have 14. What do we have? Um, can't keep all. Huh? Um, huh? Men's breakfast. We had like 14 here on Friday. And uh, what do we have on Saturday? Like 14 again on Saturday? Um, uh, our Bible studies have been just awesome. And God's trying to shut that down. God is trying to yeah, shut this good. place down because he knows what we're doing through all these people here. Yeah. Did I say God? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. See? The devil, see? The devil's trying to shut this place down. We're not going to let him, are we? No. No, we're, we're, we're going to fight on our knees, right? Yeah. And Mark's going to talk about that today. Talk. God is warning us. He's trying to tell us what's going on in, in the spiritual realms. you got to have your spiritual ears on, your spiritual eyes. That's Pastor Melissa's... Uh, 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 issue that we have to cover, not issue, but it's her responsibility as a pastor of this church, mine and Pastor Mark, as our spiritual ears and spiritual eyes in the spiritual realm. I just heard on the radio today, you have to be very careful what's going on. But we're in there fighting for each and every one. We love you. We love you, and God loves you more importantly. God loves you. Did you know that? And he don't make junk. You're all a child of God. That's right. And he will be faithful to complete the work in you, Frank. Amen? Yeah, amen. amen. Yes. He'll encourage us. Amen? Amen. He's not done with me either. No. Thank not God. Yet. Mark, I thought Rick would say that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's still blinking. I got time. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm done now. Okay. Lord, thank you. Thank you for Pastor Mark and the message he has. He has it laid it on his heart. We've been talking about uh, my. Uh, I'll, let, I'll, let him, I'll just let him go. Okay. Let him, let him, let him, I'll just let him do it. Thank you. Lord. Help yourself. I know. I know. I just love the Lord. Still going, Mark. Lord bless you. Maybe I can help talk. No, I respect you, Pastor. There you go. Thank you. Uh, just want to remind something. The cards are out there as you walk out the door on the right. These are cards for the church, and on the back side gives information. Good stuff. You leave a message if you need to call, and uh, we can get back to you for sure. Uh, the other thing is, I don't. Uh, let me see. Uh, we, I don't think we gave actually the announcements. So. Um, Hmm? Go ahead. Okay, Wednesday, I think we're going to start Philippians. Some people call it Philippines. In the Philippines, they call it Philippines. <laughs> Philippians, and I think it's exciting. I don't even know what's going on, I forgot, but it's something about, I think me and Linda and whoever. Huh? So, the point is, it's going to be great, and because God is there. Amen. That's the point. And we are working closer together as pastors than ever before. God is Amen. doing a good work here. Yes. And we need your prayers. One thing I always felt the churches on, they don't ask enough for pastors' prayer. Pray for your pastor. Pray for the leadership. Pray for the ones that love you and are serving you. Even me, I serve them. But this is this is a pleasure. Um, and I, I completely shake in my sho shoes sometimes. You know, what am I... What's God going to say through me? But you know what? That's because I'm talking to God. I'm accountable to God. We're accountable one to another. And we love you. And this is great. A number of people here. And then also, so that is 5.30, Wednesday, food, fellowship, 6 o'clock to 7 or after uh, for the actual uh, teaching on Philippians. And then on Friday, men, only, only men, um, breakfast, and I love that. Uh, I think that has a special sound to it that we honor men, so that we have a time just us men fellowship, and that's a good breakfast at 8 a.m. And then Saturday, absolutely 9 a.m. Come on in, guys and girls and kids and everybody. Um, it's a precious time, really great time Saturday, um, and everything. So God is so good. Um, that we are doing something else, and unless it's rain or something, Friday, Saturday, garage sale in front of here, in right. front of the church, we're going to do a garage sale. Now, that means uh, we're going to be doing um, things, and um, I ain't sure exactly how it's going to go, but I really want to do this as a community draw. It's not just to be out there to sell stuff. Or even maybe give something to somebody. They need something they need. You know, they right. don't have the money. I absolutely, we agree on that, right? Okay, that is my heart. That is my heart. They want to give a donation. I mean, I, I don't even know if we want to charge or anything. Just say donation. But we'll see about that. But that is my heart. 
That is my heart. Even whatever things that we can help people with. Yes. So praise the Lord. Just pray about that. Pray for the leadership. Pray for everything. Pray for this church, where it's going and what God's doing. And we will be faithful. We will do our part. So, uh, and then I want, I want to finish. I want to say this. I'm not finished, but just starting. Um, happy Memorial Day weekend. Yes. Amen. God remember that. And I look up the definition yesterday. I want to be sure. This is to honor those that have died in war. To yes. serve in this country. Amen. I think it might even account for some people that have passed away after. But it is to honor those that have given their lives for this country. Whether you believe in war or not, it does give a country respect and honor and freedom. And it breaks the bondages of the devil that does wicked things in many countries. And wickedness is all what war is about. Greed and all that. So pray, praise the Lord. Tomorrow's Memorial Day. My daughter and I go out to our, my mom's graves and different <clears throat> ones and clean them up every time. And in fact, um, I have someone ask me if I could do theirs and stuff. So this is a very special time. Let's honor those that give their lives. And, um, and it says, take it slow, no race. Uh, oh, yeah, that's because you took so long. I had to read that. Take it <laughs> I love it. I love take it. it slow. Well, listen, I, I, I will not uh, deter good? from that. I will take it slow because this is difficult in some ways for me. This incredible message I had never done before. But the Lord just laid in my lap last night, and it just was so easy, like butter. Um, and I hope it really blesses you. I'm following up with, with uh, Pastor uh, Blake and his wonderful message the last few weeks. But he, uh, he really did the um, um, emphasis uh, in the Bible at First Church. And that is, and it is, uh, that one was about loss. Into uh, loss, its first love. Loss, its first love. I want to say correctly, its loss, its first love. It had a love, it lost. That is sad because the only way you can do, do once you've done that is you've got to turn around and start going the other way. Each one of these churches, I'm just going to summarize a little bit right here to begin. They represent from that time of Christ to now and to the end. These churches are all out there. Some of the very churches are still around. But the message in each church is for different churches. It's amazing. Jesus put that together in Revelation. So we are going to go, I'm just going to go a little bit. I want to look at, uh, he did, Pastor Blake did uh, chapter 2 and verse, and, and those verses. I'm going to do just verse 4, just one thing I want to say about it. And then we'll move on. It says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast loved the first love. Just a little bit I want to add that the Lord gave me here. It says, This refers to emphasis, first deep love and passion for Christ and his word. The, hallelujah! The deep love for Christ and his word. This warning teaches us that knowing correct doctrine, obeying some of the commands, and worshiping in the church are not enough. The church must have all a heartfelt love for Jesus Christ and his word. Amen. Heartfelt is from the heart, brother and sister. <clears throat> it's like my definition. The Lord gives of a true Jew is not only in name, it's a Jew by heart. <clears throat> he loves the Lord. The church must have all Above all, heartfelt love for Jesus Christ and his word, sincere love for Christ results in single-hearted devotion to him, purity of life, and a love for truth. Praise the Lord. Do you love the truth, brother and sister? The truth will set you free. Okay, I'm going to go on over Revelation 2, and I'm going to start at verse 8. Praise the Lord. This is the church of Myrna. 
Smyrna, you could say, but it's Myrna. It's the right uh, uh, way to say it, Myrna. And it is, um, uh, this is the, the second church. And we're going to start at verse 8 through 11. The church of Myrna. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I love this. <laughs> I love the Lord. <laughs> I love these brothers, I love the testimonies. And my brother Leonard, precious son with them. I'll be thankful for God's goodness. The Holy Ghost is just falling on me right now. And all I can do is just stand here. Oh Lord, hallelujah. Unto the angel of the church of Myrna, write, these things said the first and the last, which was dead and alive. This is Jesus. Jesus didn't leave at the end of his Gospels. He's still around. And he spoke to the brother that wrote Revelation, Brother John. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. I know the blasphemy of them which say, they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Did you get that? They are Jews, but they're not. Just because you're born in the bloodstream, it doesn't qualify you the bloodstream of Christ and his true people, and they are his true people. And then we were grafted in, so we're his true people also. Hallelujah, glory to God. And I want to read something here. It said, and I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews and not, but are the synagogue of Satan. And the word property, let me read this. Having mean, it means having nothing at all. Anybody been there? Having nothing? I remember being there. I remember I thought it'd be nice to have $100. I want to go down to the casino and play something. But <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I really could win on that machine. I got a Dixit one time. It, it broke. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> it means having nothing at all. The property of Christians at Mira was extensive. They were economy, e econ economically de destitute. Nothing. Yet Jesus says they were spiritually rich. Guess what? They had a richness, not of this world. Brother and sister, I will say, and I've said before, if I died with no money and poor and wretched and in the, in the grave with nothing to show, if I have Jesus, I have everything. Amen. The Bible says we are rich. Rich. Are you rich? You want to get richer? Get more of Jesus. Get in that word. Read the Bible in the morning. Read the time. Spend time sharing Jesus. Just tell me your testimony. What you have gone through. Praise the Lord. By the way, just want to say, I'm so thankful for Pastor and his dear, dear wife being with us. And they're back in Florida for these weeks now. Isn't that nice? Give them applause. Come on, let's say thank you. They really love us. They really love the church. They really do. And I honor that. And um, praise the Lord for that. Okay. And let me go on to verse... Um, yes, we'll move to 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, and ye may be tried, and ye will have tribulation. Ten days, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Woo! And let me read about the crown of life. The Greek here for crown is sepahana. Sep 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 it is uh, the, the victor's crown originally made of palm leaves. Listen to this. This is really great of palm trees for a crown of life and place on the heads of winning athlete, athletes. But the same word is also used for the crown of 
thorns brutally placed on Jesus. Did anybody know that? Blows me away. I haven't read this before. It's the same as an athlete that's just won. They put these palm leaves on his head, and he's won, and it honors him. It's a crown. And Jesus got the crown of thorns. Guess what we get? We get a crown of life. what? Life. Crown of life. Amen. We get a crown in heaven. The Bible says we can throw it to the feet of Jesus. Woo! Glory! Come on, let's throw that crown. We're going to get ready for it. We're going to make it look pretty. We're going to decorate it. We're going to make it resemble Jesus. That crown. Don't give up anyone. Give everything you have to Christ. And when you feel like giving up, call a brother or sister. Call one another. This is not just a message about revelation. This is a message about loving one another and the love God has for his church. And this church is totally different than the one pastor gave last week. This church is going on. And God is honoring them and speaking to them great things. And they did not lose their first love. And we got another church coming up. It's willing to even be put in jail, to have no money, and they're still praising God because they're serving the Lord. That's coming up. Praise the Lord. I'm too excited to calm down. <laughs> Pastor Mark, <clears throat> just kidding. I don't want to calm down. Um, and so, verse, yeah, we'll stop right, right there. Is uh, the church of um, Mer Myrna is what I just read. So that's awesome. And for, don't forget the crown life. They were waiting for it. They were working for it. They were, they were having poverty. They were having tribulation. And, and, and the Jews were blaspheming them in the synagogue. Uh, and, 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 but fear not of those things which thou shalt suffer. Christ was with them through this. So let's go on, I believe, to the next one. And um, yes, to uh, now we'll go. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. There's one more thing. At verse 12, it says, He that overcomes shall uh, not be hurt of the second death. And it says, The second death. This refers to eternal punishment, the lake of fire, which only the faithful overcomers will escape. Do you realize there's two deaths? And people in the world, if they do not have Christ, they die a physical death, and then they die an eternal death. That means eternally dying, you could say. Never, ever, the bodies, they, they will, it is not, a, it's a conscious thing. Christians die once, and then they never die the second death. We are set free from that. It is that Satan was guaranteed from the Garden of Eden he would have a second death on everybody. He says, I got it. You are lost. You listen to the devil. You listen to the demon. You listen to that snake. And you sin. Now you can't go back. And he was fooled. He was deceived because Satan was a liar. He didn't know what he's talking about. Jesus Christ was the reason why now we do not have to have a second death. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Wow, I like that. I think I'm going to keep with this thing. I'm not going to stop serving Jesus. Come with me. Okay, let's go here. we got uh, Revelation chapter 2, 12 through 17. We're doing real good for time. I timed this at 22 minutes. That means when I'm here is at least 44 minutes. <laughs> well, Pastor Blake is laughing, so I must be okay. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hi, sister. Hi. My beautiful sister there. Brandy. Hi. And her fiance. Praise the Lord. Hi. I said, my last name is Brandy, so we're pretty close. <laughs> so praise the Lord. What a precious young lady. And pray for them. They have their difficulties, but God is blessing them. They're over in uh, Barron, actually camping out. But um, they have somebody in the campground that next week wants to come with, another lady. 
So isn't that Amen. wonderful? Amen. Ministry in the campground. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Look, you, let, you tell them if they want us to come out there and preach, we'll do that. We'll have a fire by the, preaching by the fire. Amen. Huh? Amen. Oh, it's okay, Amen. Pastor Blake. <laughs> I'm so happy. Wow, praise the Lord. Oh, the energy of the Lord, the power of God. The, oh, Jesus Christ. You are awesome. Praise the Lord. I, I can't tell you what I'm doing right now, but it's something I'm doing in my life that is amazing. I have energy I have. I'm just saying it's uh, the Lord is so good. When he puts me up, all of a sudden the Lord just comes on me. Uh, this is Revelation 2, 12 through 17. This is a, uh, another church. is Pigamus. 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 Satan's seat is called, is, that's what it means. Satan's seat, a spiritual stronghold. There are certain strongholds for Satan, like Las Vegas bars and so forth. I'm going to go through that. And it is, um, I'm going to read the rest of that when I get back. Let's start at 13 or 12. And I, I'll get, and to the angel of the church in Pregamus, write, these things said, he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. When it says sharp, bless you, brother. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Love you both. When it says sharp sword, if you're a man of war or even in a battle or even if you're a hunter, you make sure your equipment is sharp. And a knife is very important. It will do um, what you need to do with it. So a sharp sword with two edges is able to cut either way, this way or that way. It is able in, in warfare. You got a bunch of people around you. You roll around like that, and it is meant to put down the enemy. We're not talking about people. We're talking about the enemy of the devil. And when people talk to me about spiritual battles. I can tell you, uh, you need to put down the enemy. You may think you have some personal addictions and this and that, that's the problem. It is, it is the, the bandage of the problem. It's the outside, you see the cut, you see the sore. But the real problem has to do with healing inside. And that's where Jesus comes spiritually. And angel of the church, and uh, let me see. And these things said he, which hath sharp uh, sword and two edges, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name and has not denied my faith. So God is commending. Um, thou hold fast my name. In other words, they don't forsake his name. And they, de they don't deny their faith. Even these times when people are being put to death, they will not deny their faith. And that Antipas was my faithful martyr. Who was slain among you where Satan dwelt? Now, this is where I'm going to go back to reading this thing here. It says, uh, Satan's seat, Satan's seat, which I said there, it is a spiritual stronghold. There are certain strongholds for Satan. Now, I'm going to name uh, Las Vegas. Uh, it could be casinos. It could be bars. Certain cities uh, have a stronghold. There are certain homes of businesses where Satan uh, was invited in. And also Ouija boards and a home where demons enjoy people on, <coughs> on the drugs or alcohol or sexual uh, abuse. And the power of prayer is what I want to say here. The power of prayer and casting out demons spiritually, stronghold recommended. When you have a home, I would always encourage this for anybody. When you buy a new home, you don't know what was in there first before you. It is a very wise thing to have a pastor or ministers or just certain Christians come with you and pray over that and and pray that God will set anything that's there to cast it out that's not of God. People do lead demons. They do live a lifestyle that may be wrong and so that's the point. Praise the Lord. So let me go on here. Uh, in verse, four, verse 14, but I know, but I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balak, and taught Balak 
to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. These are names well, well known in the Old Testament. But uh, anyway, uh, to cast, to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. So that is causing sin to do these idols and stuff. And so, so hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of, of Nicolaitan, which thing I hate, Nicolaitans, Nicolaitans, repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone in the... Let me just say about the manna. Manna was in the, in the desert. It was hidden because it would fall from the sky. And if they did not take it up right then, it would, it would melt away or it just kind of dissolve. It was hidden manna from God. In other words, God has manna he can give you to give you, to get you through. Hidden manna. And will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, save he that receiveth. God has very, God loves using names. And God is very special to God. He has a name for us that we don't know, that is in heaven, that um, some people like Paul, or I mean, uh, yeah, Paul, he was Saul, and God changed his name to Paul. And that was a good reason. I wonder if some people have a different name, they just don't realize it. Um, God told me one time, because my mom named me Michael, but then within six months at the time, she changed it. And God told me at one time, use Mark, that's the New Testament, use Samuel, that's the Old Testament. And so I'm Brother Mark Samuel. And I like that because it's like I really honor my mom that this is something she didn't realize at the time. And my mom uh, loved her children so much. And so uh, I did not change my name when I became a Christian. But I think there are some people the Lord says, I'll give you a new name. And whether you know the name or not, you got a new name. You got a name that God wants you to have. Paul came as Saul. And then he said, no, you're going to be Paul. And that was for good reason, because they only knew Saul as a, person, a butcher. He is there to hunt people down and put him in prison and beat him up. And, and he stood there when Stephen was being stoned. And Stephen's the most amazing story to me. I, I love Stephen's story almost as, as much. As, in the New Testament, it's probably my favorite. And Stephen stood there as he's been beaten. He's getting stoned. And he's dying. He looks up. And he says, I see the Lord standing on the right hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Standing. And they blocked their ears and they threw the stones all the more. And Stephen died and went to the heaven. What a precious way to go. So his name was Paul. Paul, and he preached about Stephen, he preached about others, but Stephen was one of them, just came in to do some work. But they got him and they and put him to death. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, so these places where sin can come into your house, it can be games, widgie board. I, I googled that and I could not believe all the widgie boards you could buy. And I, I know a lot of people tell me they have one. And if you don't know, this it really works. It's demonic, and it can tell you things. But it's not. It's not. It's something you definitely don't do. But these things can come into your life. So um, let me see. Here. Okay, I've got something to read here on uh, 16, where it says, "Repent, or else I'll come again quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth." And the sword in my mouth, it's like a sword that comes out. It's his word, it's a sword. The word cuts. It's like a sword, but it's more, much more uh, able to use it because it's the word of God. It, it covers everything wherever he, you're at. And it says, I will fight against them. Jesus opposes 
any within his churches who promote a tolerant attitude towards sin. Let me say that again. Jesus opposes any within his church who promotes a total attitude towards sin. A, promote a tolerant attitude towards sin. Tolerant, that means you'll put up with it. I'm not saying, we're not saying, that means if you fall, but then don't come back. No. That is saying, absolutely, we are tolerant. God is tolerant when people struggle. But he wants you to get victory. He wants you to get to that place. And I honestly believe it may take years, some people. Absolutely. Some of these sins are deep down, gut-wrenching, and they're tied to you. They're just grabbing you inside. They don't want to let go. And I believe sometimes they just simply need to be released in a spiritual way. But it don't always happen. But anyway, he promises to wage war against the immoral profession believers if they do not repent. So he will come against you if you don't repent. That's the thing right. about sin. It's not so much, don't ever sin again. Jesus will never say that. It can't be done on this earth. He says, when you be sin, do like Pastor said, you go and make it right. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, boy, that, that was a tough one for me. And boy, I, I, was, I, I was one that I didn't want to say I was wrong. And uh, boy, to make it right, you have to do that. And you have to come before Jesus, that's the big thing, and say, Lord, I need you. I'm sorry, forgive me. Yes. And then let's look at uh, 17 also here. And it says, He that hath the ear, let him hear the Spirit. And to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. And will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name, which no man knoweth, say he that received. And let me read this. Hear what the Spirit said. He must, we must heed the warning of the Holy Spirit today. He continues to speak the same words Christ spoke to the church, seven churches of Asia. Wow. He's still speaking. Amen. He's still speaking, Lens. He's still speaking, everybody. Bobby's still speaking. Yep. Sister, he's still speaking. He's not going to stop speaking. Is he speaking to you? Are you hearing his word? If you're not, come up here if you need. After him, we'll pray with you. And also, I invite others. We're going to do some praying after this. I have a feeling, but I know a couple. We need, they need prayer. But do you hear what he's saying? Are you grabbing the word of God? You don't have a Bible, we give you one. Grab the Bible, open up, and let him speak to you. If it don't speak in one book, try another book. Try another book. Hear what the Spirit said. We must heed the warning of the Holy Spirit today. He continues to speak the same words Christ spoke to the seven churches of Asia, commanding us to overcome sin in the world and not to tolerate immorality. If we fail to overcome in this important area, we lose God's favor and presence, the Spirit's power, and in the end become enemies of the kingdom of God. If, on the other hand, we overcome, we receive the hidden manna of spiritual life and the white stone signifying the triumph of our faith over all that sought to destroy our devotion to Christ. Jesus wants us to have victory and he wants us to be triumphed and not the, not the motorcycle triumph, although I have one that's really good, but triumph in the world over sin. And when they make a good bite, like a Harley Davidson, my opinion, the best ever. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, well. Um, uh, no. uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I, I got a rope I'll carry with me. Um, <laughs> the Lord gives us triumph. Amen. The Lord gives us Harley Davidson. <laughs> no, no, no. Just kidding. The Lord gives us triumph. Now I want to say, please don't take it wrong, but we got we got president candidates coming up. We gotta pray and lit and, and vote for the one that is righteous. Let's just say the more righteous. And I believe that is Trump, but that is what we gotta do. We gotta cry out to God. We got we gotta lift that voice as churches. We need to be leading, and so we need to say that if we lose this, uh, we got a president right now that is going to take us down the hole. So just think of that. 
And that is true. I know what's going to happen. There will be persecution right soon. And I don't think, I don't think we'll have any hope of a lot of things. But mostly people will be hurt. We need someone that, that we need a, leaders in our government, in the city, in the state, our governor. Pray for that. Pray for God's righteousness. What I'd like to do more than anything since day and day, just pray for the righteousness that you see. And then vote on that. See who has the most righteousness if there's no other choice. Just a little reminder. Okay, we are going to go to um, this uh, interesting one. Thyatira. 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 Is that wrong? So Thyatira is how it's broke down. It's Thyatira. And Thyatira, um, let me go and read this. We've got good time, so praise the Lord. Um, we're starting 18 to the end. And praise the Lord. Yeah. And unto the angel of the church of Tyria, write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like a flame of fire. Woo! Flame of fire to burn away your sin. And his feet are like fine brass. Beautiful. I know thy works and char charity and service. Charity is love. And faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. The last was thy works and charity, thy first. Your works more than the, than you do your works, do your charity, do your service, do your faith. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, hello, remember that woman from the Old Testament? I don't know if I could name a child Jezebel. That would be interesting. <laughs> Because there is something on that name. It really does linger. Uh, Jezebel kind of means something that's not um, a good thing. But I'm sure that it can be something we can overlook if that's their name. But Jezebel, which call herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants, God's servants, to commit fornication and to eat things sanctified to God, idols. So we're talking about, at that time, going into the temple, you sacrifice things. It could be food, it could be different items, your, your, your crop. And, and then it's saying that uh, to commit fornication and to eat things sanctified to idols, it's meant for the idol and it is meant um, in whatever way. But it's, it's, it's to... It's not to God is the point. It's not sacrificing to God. And, and to, it's to seduce the servants to commit fornication, to eat things. So it's to seduce them to do those things. Let's look at my footnote here. It says, Thou suffest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, sin within the church in Tyria was the tendency to tolerate sin, unrighteousness, unbiblical teaching in, the, in this leaders. Christ calls one particular person, Jezebel, a name derived from the Old Testament Jezebel, and similar uh, with idolatry and sensuality and motive um, uh, to uh, control people. Um, some at Tyrina were submitting to or tolerating a spiritual Jezebel who exhibit great charisma, charisma among with seductive influence. Christ condemns this Jezebel and the freedom to sin that she represents. We must reject all spokespersons who put their own words above biblical revelation and who state that God accepts within the church sexual immorality and other questionable acts of compromise with the world. Some of the church may tolerate such false teaching because of indifference, personal friendship, or fear of confrontation, or because of a desire to place harmony, personal advancement, or money. 
God says he will judge such leaders with punishment and all those that in the ways that do not repent. So that is, God wants us to not um, uh, do these things that can tear down the church, really. Okay, 21. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and I and all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto all the rest of Tyrida, Tyrita, Tyrita, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have always hold fast to, till I come. Till I come. And let's look at this. It says, hold fast till I come. Christ's words, till I come, and unto the end, make it clear that his messages, warnings, and promises to the seven churches apply to all churches to the end. It's to us. It's to all of us. And just finish up the verses here. And he's, he that overcometh and keepeth my words unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And as vessels of potters shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my Father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And you know, that is my message, and we can go on from there to the other churches, but this is what I want to end with. This teaching and preaching of the seven churches is so important because these seven represent all the churches from then until now. And so we should all pray, where are we? Where is our church at? Where are we individually at? Where are we in this number of churches? And I just want to end in prayer here. And I think we're going to do a altar call. May I say this? I know a lot of things that I've seen in the past. And there's times somebody can be a member of a church, a born-again church, and 20 years later they still haven't given their life to Christ. Or they need to dedicate again. So let's Remember that. Don't ever be shy to come up. You need prayer for something again. But let's just pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we pray for these churches we cross over this morning. Pray for your path, Lord Jesus, for our church, for our fellowship, our time together. Father, I pray a blessing upon each one here. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that if there's any ought between someone with someone, it can be taken care of. I pray, Lord Jesus, your blessing upon the River Church and Father, blessing upon all the hearts that need you that are here. I just pray, Lord, you move upon each one. Father, give us the sword that is sharp on both sides. Give us the word of God that, Lord, we can not only come against the works of the devil, but we can destroy them out of our lives and others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <coughs> well, thank you, Pastor Mark. Um, and like you said, if, if you if you haven't given your life to Jesus yet, Jesus said, you either for me or against me. Jesus loves you. Satan hates you. And he said, you either for me or against me. You're either living for me or you're living for Satan. Your father is either Satan or it's me, Jesus. So if you're living for Jesus today, raise your hands and praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Amen. If you're not living for Jesus, come up here, we'll pray for you. And you can start today living for Jesus.